Hello, everyone. Um, this is uh, Josh and Kyle from the OC Habitats Restoration Team. Uh, we're our restor restoration leads uh, for OC Habitats. Today, we'll be presenting our program orientation to you guys. All right, everyone. So here at our uh, OZ Habitats mission is to provide a public service for the many habitats of Orange County, California. And we do this through conservation, uh, rehabilitation, restoration, education, outreach, volunteerism, and monitoring to promote the preservation, conservation, and restoration of natural habitats and the species therein. So you might be asking, what is restoration? Restoration is the practice of renewing and restoring degraded, damaged, and destroyed ecosystems and habitats in the environment by active human intervention and action. And some ways we do this is through planting native species, removing invasive species, as well as um, watering plants and doing extra weeding and picking up trash. So doing restoration is very important because it restores balance in various ecosystems through removal of invasive species, as well as promoting biodiversity through growth of targeted native species, which acts as an invitation for native wildlife, like the threatened uh, building savanna sparrow at the very left, the uh, Anna's hummingbird or the Allen's hummingbird in the middle left, and the great blue heron and the great white egret in the middle right, and the uh, Ridgeway Rail, which is also endangered. All right, so some of our previous restoration projects that we've done in the past, um, pictured here is Santiago Oaks in March of 2019, where OC Habitats partnered with OC Parks to work on restoration of an area that had burned from the 2017 fires. Where it had burned, it left little to no vegetation and the vegetation that was present was unfortunately non-native. So we planted 40 to 60 plants lining the driveways and center medians of the regional park. And the progress has and the progress has been amazing since we've planted these plants there. Here's just a, a map of Santiago Oaks and our restoration, a brief video, and the progress. Another project we've done is the Irvine Regional Coastal Sage Garden from May 2019 to August of 2019. We partnered with OC Parks again and maintained um, newly restored area after the 2017 fires by removing non-native species, watering plants, mulching the gardens, and pulling of weeds. And then here's an overview of that and a few pictures. Here's another restoration project, uh, the Hardy Nature Trail from September 2019 to March of 2020, uh, where OC Habitats uh, restored a fourth of a mile of historic trail that was affected again by these 2017 fires, where we removed non-native plant species, removed trash and weeds, and planted native species in the area. Here's an overview map and then Few pictures of our volunteers and interns. So this is um, a mock restoration schedule of what it usually would look like. Um, so previously we held restorations Wednesdays and Saturdays of every week. Um, and this is how we would send out an email each week. Um, we'd have the date, the location, um, where to park, the habitat type that we'll be working on, the leads, um, and the time. And then any extra notes, such as you can see here, OC Register will be doing a piece on our work um, at Huntington Beach Wetlands. And there is a commitment requirement of two times monthly um, or weekly. And then Saturdays, is at uh, Huntington Beach Wetlands Conservancy and that requirement is only monthly. Here's an overview of Huntington Beach Wetlands Conservancy. 
where you can see all the different salt marsh habitats, um, where these coastal wetlands that are flooded and drained by the salt water brought in by the tides. So they have uh, Magnolia Marsh, Brookhurst Marsh, Talbert Marsh, and then um, they'll recently be acquiring the Newland Marsh. So when we do restorations at Huntington Beach Wetlands, um, our main um, plant that we're looking for and preserving is the salt marsh bird's beak. And that's pictured um, here. It's a small purplish plant. Um, and we plant and preserve this endangered species. It's one of the last eight sites in all of California to host this species. Um, we restore the tidal wetlands environment um, and the living shoreline project where we stop shoreline erosion and provide foliage for uh, marsh birds. Here's uh, Upper Newport Bay Salt Marsh, um, another salt marsh that we do restoration projects as with, um, where we partner with Project Grow. Um, and this is a salt marsh habitat, as we said, and we remove uh, invasive species such as Algerian sea lavender pictured here and uh, debris and a lot of trash. Here's uh, UNB, the Newport Valley sites, um, pictured here on the left. Um, so Newport Valley, abbreviated as NB1 and NB2, and then right across we have MWD, NPV. Those are just abbreviations for um, the restoration projects that we work on. So we're also partnered with Project Go. This is a completely different habitat from the salt marshes. So this is riparian. Um, so it's influenced by a river, a stream, or adjacent to a lake. And here we're removing a uh, base of black mustard pictured in the middle right, and then Spanish sunflower pictured on the far right. And then we plant native target species. These uh, upper Newport Bay target species that we want to keep in our native are the meal fat, pictured on the left, the royal willow pictured in the middle, and the spiny rush pictured on the right. Um, here are some more. We have the coast golden bush, um, the coyote brush, and the California cudweed, as well as uh, a few of the more dangerous, if you will. Um, so we have stinging nettle, um, coastal prickly pear and the choya, which are also native. And here's uh, for Upper Newport Bay, here's the target species that we want to remove and we work to actively remove at OC habitats. And this is uh, black mustard pictured on the left, Spanish sunflower in the middle and uh, Algerian sea lavender. Uh, so as far as equipment, um, OC Habitats and our partners at Huntington Beach Wetlands and Project Grow provide us with uh, shovels, shears, bags, um, oftentimes boots if it's going to be super muddy, um, and rakes. Uh, but you will be required to bring your own gloves, um, face masks, water, and any snacks uh, you may need. As far as clothing, um, we do require masks to help limit uh, COVID exposure, um, closed-toed shoes, long pants for uh, the bushy habitats, scratch up your legs, um, and hats and sunglasses just to protect uh, yourself from the sun. And just a note that the clothing could get very muddy and very dusty. So here are just some COVID-19 safety regulations. So you obviously want to wear your mask over your mouth and nose, just properly and secured behind your ears. You don't want it falling down over your nose and mouth, falling down where it's not protected and just properly wear your mask. Um, six feet social distancing, um, bring your own tools if you wish. And if you're feeling sick, please do not attend the events.
So signing up for future events on Better Impact, um, we have where you can um, go to opportunities here um, and sign up by going to either the calendar or the list and it will show you, um, such as Kyle's profile here, um, shows him his hours that he's worked on this year so far and then his lifetime. And then it has um, any upcoming shifts that he may have signed up for um, or volunteered for. And here's a opportunity calendar. So this will show all the different um, events, volunteer, whether it's open to volunteers or open to interns and um, whether or not the public can sign up. Um, and then you can activate those filters and sign up accordingly. So for volunteers who are working on um, the current restoration programs, um, we have uh, the beach cleanup, Huntington Beach Wetlands, and OCH uh, Upper Newport Bay pictured here, um, just as examples when uh, we start and when our project date to end is. And um, here's a better background of um, what would pop up once you uh, choose which uh, event you would like to sign up as and it allows you to do so whether you're a volunteer or an intern gives you background um, who's leading um, how you can contact the leads of that event and then um, what event you're signing up for on the bottom and then uh, i will tell you that you're assigned to this activity and then um, this is what would pop up. And then it will remind you that you have an upcoming shift. Um, and then, yeah, if you would like to bring a friend um, or family member, um, you could just email us um, and we'll give you further details and any um, extra information that you would like to know. And um, you could also forward our event Eventbrite links or notifications um, to friends or family members and they can register as well. Um, and this is all our information. You can also reach us uh, on Slack if you are an intern. Thank you.